Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Good day, good evening, and welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is the Film and Music Show. We are super excited to welcome back a friend of the platform, Mr. Robert J. Moore. Before we bring him out, though, let's welcome the star of our show from London. It's Dr. Madeline Chan. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Jacqueline. Hello, viewers. <laughs> so nice to see you. It's been a little while. Yes, I know. My computer just, you know, it's just one of these things with techno, this techno, techniki. Technic, techie these days. So, you know, it's a learning lesson. So I'm here, present, ready to go. Well, I'm super excited to have you here. And you know our guest, Robert J. Moore, and you've worked oh. with him. Tell us a little bit about yeah. Songs for You, and then we'll bring him right out. Yeah. Um, well, Songs for You is um, um, a production company where we work with songwriters and musicians and producers, engineers and masterers. Uh, videographers as well, photographers. And basically, um, I felt there was a little bit of a gap. Actually, to be honest, I didn't, it was the person that really um, influenced Songs For You was by writing, being challenged and writing a song for um, RJ Moore. Because what we do is we write songs about people's um, life stories in a song, but also we write for celebrations like, if it's an 18th or the birth of a baby or saying goodbye to a loved one that you didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Um, and Adversity to Awesome Life, which is your title, Dr. Jacqueline, I have to say to you. And um, yeah, so it was the wonderful RJ Moore that inspired me from, from how we did as um, like an experiment to see if we can do this. And RJ Moore is just a phenomenal person. When he sees um, potential talent, he taps into that, challenges it. And um, yeah, what, what is drawn forth is, um, yeah, is magic, is magnetic. And um, that's um, RJ Moore from, from Streets to Forbes magazine. And that's what the song is about. And yeah. I'll let Robert Jim Moore, though, say. <laughs> well, thank you. So for really a man who needs no introduction, he's mm. gone from the streets to the stars. And he's gone mm. from living a life that is hard to imagine to one where he's helping inspire other people. Let's welcome him to the show. Woo! Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh, it's called Star. It's got <laughs> oh, nice to see you. Good to be seen. How so, are you? We're doing well. And you know, the last time I saw you, we had we've had a, some great interviews, but since then, you've had even more success. You've had more things going on in your life. You've got a film coming out. You've got this. Yeah, I signed, song. The, signed the agreement there uh, two weeks ago for my uh, for film, uh, my life history. Um, my book, my book hit like number one and it went fascinating right up to being on New York Times billboard and the Piccadilly billboard and well recognized and <laughs> wow. That is amazing. You and, know, then, and then uh, and then I like, like I said, I put a challenge out there to see if she could actually do my song, do my life history. But some of the fascinating techniques about the song I like are the people behind it. Now, I know she's modest. I know she doesn't like to tell you. 
All right. But she's here right now. She was part of it. She's part of the singing. And, and she actually hit the one eight wonder before in one of her songs. She doesn't tell you this though, but I know it. All right. And the per other person behind it is, was actually in, uh, where was he located at the time when he, when he did it? Who are we talking about? Sorry. I, I'm going to help write it. I'm not saying the name yet. Oh, oh, right. Audi. Audi that, K. Barrier, who's a, a, a guest. And Dr. Jacqueline knows of Audi. And he's writing a song for Dr. Jacqueline at the moment. But, yeah, where Audi. Where was he located that time? Because he was really, really busy. And he was, he was. Iraq. He was in Iraq at the time. He's in Iraq. And, yeah. And he's that's, on. That's pretty some, cool. Here's a guy fighting for the country and help, helping yeah. me do stuff to get his mind off things, right? So, I mean, that was pretty yeah. cool. And the fact that he's got a pretty cool cousin, I like that idea, too. <laughs> What's his name? Yeah. <laughs> really, really You're really putting me on the spot here. Dr. Jacqueline, Audi's cousin is a, a phenomenal Elvis artist. Elvis Shane. Elvis Shane. Yeah. yeah. And the he wrote a song singer. called A Country Singer called About a Boy, About His Boy. And yeah, it went fun. viral. Is that the word? word? Yeah, viral? It, was, it went viral. 22, 20, was it 22 million? 22 years? million. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Robert or RJ, is, uh, as <laughs> Madeline's referring to, <laughs> what is this song about and what's the significance of it? It's the whole thing's about my life. Um, she read my book and saw the potential of my book, um, how my life was. Um, so just give you a little background. I mean, I was drug addict, alcoholic, 17 years in out of jail with the mafia, with the bikers, hanging around the wrong people, obviously. Um, I was seven years on the streets, um, and I, I, I had no life. I had nothing. I was just doing all the wrong things. One day, somehow, I, I had epiphany, changed my life around, and getting doc uh, two doctorate degrees. I got social service worker uh, diploma, addiction diploma. I got uh, bachelor of arts in uh, psychology and I got my master's in psychology. I was a registered therapist for 12 years, re a registered uh, addiction counselor for 10 years or so. And I utilize that now in business to do masterminds. I just sold a publishing company where I went. I was dealing with Les Brown, Les Brown's daughter and uh, Jack Canfield, a bunch of them that I was publishing and, and helping out and doing some really well, amazing things on stage with, you know? So one thing I got to say is uh, I won't miss, the challenge that come with the publishing company, because there was a lot going on and you had to keep up with the, uh, with the momentum and, and while doing it, because I had some high end clients that you really have to push out there. That's why I hired Armour Morin, which is top strategist in the world. And uh, he's, he's been training me for a while now to do the stuff. So yeah, I mean, everything's about my life history. And today, I mean, I've been featured in Forbes magazine. There it is over here, wherever I can't get it. There's a, there's a Guinness World Record. I know that one. Okay, how do we do it this way? That one over there. <laughs> That's Robert, forced. what I'd love to have you share with our audience is you just gave us a lot of information to make it sound so simple. Like you just waved a wand and you went from yeah. A to Z. What did you do in between to get to where you are for people who are Suffered. where you are? Suffered. Tell us more. Uh, well, I, the thing is, it wasn't easy. I mean, I was an alcoholic. That's all I knew. So all I knew was to gravitate towards negativity. Um, I was kicking indoors, doing the wrong stuff. But the challenge of learning who I was, see, I went to a, a treatment center. When I went to a treatment center, they they taught me. That, and I did several different 12 steps. Now, I'll give credit to the 12-step programs out there. I won't say which ones because I took a numerous of them. Uh, the California 12-step uh, one that you get online is not related to anything. That's one of the main ones I did. It talks about your childhood and your adulthood and your, you know, the four different steps of your life, right? And it talks about your parents and everything else, how they react. So you really get to see the inside of you. So then you focus on your emotions. So I was really looked at a lot of emotions. My, I took emotions. I, I studied them like crazy because I couldn't figure out why I was doing the things I was doing. So really why I became an addiction counselor was not to, not to help other people was to figure out why I was being the asshole I was, part of my language. But that's the only way you could phrase it, because I was really a bad person. I was seeing myself in the bad picture. So basically, when I was looking at the behavior I was doing, I was saying, well, why was I doing that? Because I because I felt neglected on this or neglected on that when I was a child, and I didn't know how to express it, so I did it in violence. And then I took it out with uh, drinking and drugging that I felt, I, I thought it was invincible. 
Wow, that's amazing. It's Thank you for, for being so transparent yeah. and honest like that. Uh, can I ask a question if it's okay? Um, do, you do you think that your life was, um, it was meant to be that way yeah. in order for you to be the person that you are now? In the world. I wouldn't change a thing in the world. Yeah. Okay, now, I'm, I need to tell you, when I was 20 years old, I also lost my, my mother and my children yeah. given birth. Yeah. So I got two children by her, but she died right in my hands giving birth with a pulmonary umbilical and an epileptic seizure. That really changed me around into the drugs because um, I didn't know how to deal with that, right? So I didn't know how to deal with emotions. So when I became a therapist, I started dealing with people with emotions and grief. And I've helped over, honest to God, it's been estimated over 200,000 people. I've helped all the different things I've done. That's incredible. Um, I'd love to have you share a little bit about an opposite perspective. So you went from here to here. What about the people that are here and then go down there? I've been there. I've been there. Um, I've seen myself with millions and millions of dollars and, and next thing you know, just crash. The thing is, when you're crashing, if you don't catch yourself in time and ask for that help and get yourself humble, you're going to keep crashing. You know what I mean? You have to look at what you're doing wrong. I know a lot of millionaires right now. I, I, I actually coach. And the problem is they don't know the structure of the foundation of their business. So when it starts crashing, they're like, what do I do? Uh, well, learn to f learn how to put that together so nobody in your business can screw you around. So basically what I did is I had to learn all aspects of my whole business first before I started hiring people because then they can't say, oh, we can't do this because of this, because of that. Well, you already know you can. So don't BS me with that and, and let's just work a different area. So it allows you to focus on the right thing. So I would recommend anybody that doesn't have a coach and you're, you're really struggling in some kind of area. Get yourself a coach. You know what I mean? Get Don't get your best friend. It's going to enable you. Get someone like me. It's going to be hard ass. And I don't care if I, I don't care about your emotions. I care about your business. That's my thing. I care about your emotions later. Um, That's powerful. Do you know what's just come to my mind? You've gone from gangster of the underworld to spiritual gangster. <laughs> my, my, uh, now here's the funny thing. I, I'm, I'm married into a Christian family. My mother-in-law tells me all the time that God's going to take care of my mouth one day because I sometimes I have a trucker's mouth. I mean, as you could know, but I told her, I said, tell God, leave that alone. It's not on the list because I, it's my personality. <laughs> <laughs> it, it shines through. <laughs> so I'm wondering, it seems like it has nothing to do with how much money we have. It's got nothing to do with money. I was so broke. I was $150,000 in debt when I was started. I was $150,000 in debt when I got featured in Forbes. I was 3.2 mil, but then I've lost that um, because of wrong choices. Then I had to build back up. So, I mean, money is only an aspect that gets you different ways to make you look good. A lot of people buy their way. If you buy your way, you're going to fail. Don't buy your way. Don't fake it till you make it. How about believe in it first? Put it in your heart, body, and soul and put it out there like, like, uh, like these people talk about vision boards. Put a vision board up there, man, and you'll really work towards it. The more you see it up here, the more it's going to happen. The more you feel it, because put it realistic. If you don't put something realistic out there, you have no emotion behind it. You have to have that emotion behind it to drive you. And you mentioned about people working with a coach and all the interviews I've done. I've heard people say, well, I don't have the time to work with a coach. I don't have the money to work. Excuse, excuse, excuse. What would you say to them? You're losing out. Make the time. If you don't have the money to do it, that's when you have to do it. If you do have the money to do it, that's when you have to do it. If you find out that you want to get higher and you want to learn some more, you have to do it. No matter what I'm saying is get yourself a coach. I don't care if it's a 50 cent coach or a hundred thousand dollar coach. The point is you can also get coaches by going on YouTube and studying how they do things. It's called mapping. If you're mapping the situation, hypothetically people going on my stuff and they're just looking at the stuff because they can't afford it. Well then go on the YouTube. YouTube's got a lot of free stuff on there that everybody has. But don't put yourself in the category and say, oh, I got to learn this one. I got to go this one, go this one. Too many people got too much stuff on the go. They get confused. Stick with one person that intrigues you and go with that. I stuck with Tony Robbins at first, and I switched my gear. I switched it because I learned what I needed to learn from him, and then I moved on to someone else who could teach me more. I've been on stage with Tony Robbins. I've been on stage with uh, all these high-end people. I've been on stage... I spoke in front of 2.1 million people with all the people from the movie The Secret, uh, Thick and Grow Rich, 
Napoleon Hill. They're all personal friends. I love what you shared there. So you yeah. can work with one person and then you may continue your growth process and it's time to see who, who else you can work with. And Nobody's learn from. going to be offended if you outgrow them. Nobody will be offended. If you outgrow someone and you're sitting there saying, okay, listen, I don't think I can grow anymore with you. They're going to take that as a compliment. I'm dead serious. I mean, that's, that's the cool part of it. I've got some students right now that went from, they were like making no money. They were struggling. Now they're making six figures. I said, that's pretty cool. I said, you only took a year to do that, to learn it. Now they're making six figures. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty, it, it's all about learning the process and learning. See, I do things in a different way. If you're anxious and eager to get to that money, you're going to fail. I'm telling you right now, you're going to look for shortcuts. You're going to fail. I've been there and done it. And I've seen too many people go down that same road. They're all like, oh, if I just do this, man, I'm just going to, I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You'll make the hundred thousand. You'll crash too. Cause you won't know your foundation and you won't know your, your struggles and everything in your business. So know your foundation Know your struggles. Know what you really need in your business to keep that going. I love Thank that. Thank you so much. I, I absolutely love, that love too. it. So I'm I want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, Madeline just designated you as a spiritual gangster. She and I, <laughs> she and I speak quite often about moving from uh, from egocentric to heart centric. So. RJ, is it possible to be successful in your business in other ways than how many zeros are in your bank account? It has nothing to do with zeros in my bank account, nothing to do with money at all. It's got to do with the, the credibility I put out there. So hypothetically, people got books out there. People put a book out there and think, all right, I'm an author. I'm going to make a million dollars. The average author only sells 250 books in their life. All right. Now, I've learned techniques I could sell 5,000 a week. That doesn't make me any better than anybody else. What that does is just the fact that I'm getting my word out there more. It's not about making the money. It's not about making the money for them books a lot because you're losing 80% through all these different places that are, that are pushing your book out there. I should know because I was a publisher and I knew how much money I was making as opposed to other people making on their own. So when you look at the situation, um, you want credibility. So get yourself on stage, even if it's at five minutes on with Les Brown or somebody else or whatever, right? Take pictures with the person. That's credibility. It's online credibility, right? But the best part is if you're doing credibility and you're writing it down, remember, anybody can write anything down. So who knows if it's actually the person. A picture is a big-time credibility and same with a video because when they say your name, that's a nice credibility. Absolutely. So, and I want to go over to Madeline in a second, but so Robert, if someone were to reach out to you and say, Hey, I'd love to have a picture with you. Are you just going to say yes to every person? Cause your time's really valuable. Well, no, I, I mean, I'd say, listen, why don't you come to one of my events or something like that? Or if, I mean, I turned down a lot of podcasts because they don't have enough to offer. And sometimes I will do it. I'll tell you what, sometimes I will do it. And the reason why I will is to upbrand them. You know what I mean? Like sometimes that person is doing exceptionally well and they see they're trying very hard. They just got, they need that extra break. So now I'll, ha I'll have them tap into my circle by me being on there. So now that upbrands them with the credibility. I love that. I, I do. In fact, I, I'm going back to um, that it could be you in the way that Ro Robert could have used any top singer I'm talking about the male lead singer, not the backing like me, but the male lead singer. And he chose Miles, who's, well, I'm not being know, awful, uh, but you, you know the he's a nobody. You know, you know the amount of people I mean, I know, as far right? as the music. You know the, amount of people, Sorry? you know the amount of people I know. Yeah. I mean, he I know knows. a lot. I know, I know people, Helix. I know, you know, I know, you name it. I know a lot of singers. I know a lot of musicians. I used to, I actually used to own my own label before. Um, so, I mean, when they went from there, I knew a lot of different people, Lita Ford, uh, I got a guy right here in town. He's four time nominee. You know, I know a lot of different people, yeah. but you know, when I heard miles singing, he didn't even know I heard him sing cause it's on YouTube. And it's a friend of hers. She says, check him out. Let's hear what he does. I said, listen, that's the sound I want. Yeah. I said, they get, first of all, it gives a guy a chance. I said, let's see what he can do. Let's see where he could put it. Because I know for a fact, if he's going to try and put a song like this together, He's going to use his emotion. He's going to use his train of thought. He's going to say, okay, listen, I want to do the best I can to get out there. Although he was quite shy and intimidated about doing it all, he did it. He did a wonderful job. Yeah. 
And I that's think what we I need love. spirits. We need to hear the music. Do we have the YouTube link or do we have the? I'll, the I'll just play. I could just play the okay. song on my app here. Go. You want me just to play it? Yeah, sure, please. Here we go. Kick it. You can hear it okay? Yes. Yeah. I've been a husband, mother, and a son. Call a friend to no one. I'm the only since 17 to make my way through shadows. Never listening to anyone Spend my youth on the run Fighting and stupid to get me by Following drugs to keep me high Everyone I love died Betrayed one of and guilt so I could become the man you see never caring what came of me never caring what others see I went from a loser with many knees to a man of a purpose I'm a man of means he took a stand with his first friend never looking back at once was he he educated himself and taught anyone about business strength humanity awarded titles and accolades seen his name at the top of the page folk magazine wrote about if the journey is easy, then it's just begun. You must suffer for the things you have done. Emotional, physical, and mental pain is the price that I pay to gain. I made a promise to myself. That I've become someone else. I'm not a man I came to be. Nothing left of once was me. Just because I've fallen doesn't mean I failed. Hey. Amazing! The words, the music, the singing is just oh, gives me chills. Can I just give a credit to Martin Jimson yeah. and his son? Uh, Martin Jimson was um, who 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 um, did the music 
composer oh, of the drummer. music, and the drummer Pete Headley, and his son um, Martin Jimson's son Alex Jimson, and also um, Audio Animals, the master mixers, um, and Audi, who just now this is going to be just to let you know it's going to be a feature in my, in my movie too that song. Oh so wow! It's it's. I told him I said listen I said I'll do the movie but I want to put that in there too. So it's going to be in that. It's going to be a pretty famous up there. Tell us about the movie. The movie is basically my life history. I can't tell you that who's going to be in it yet because I'm not allowed, but I can tell you we have four main people that are big names, uh, possibly a fifth person that I'm finding out now. Um, if you want, you could share the, uh, the, 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 the little movie thing for the. Yeah, let's uh, do that. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. People understand a bit more. Will you be in the movie yourself? No, I'm not going to be in the movie myself. Um, they're going to start off with one person. They're going to show I did the 17 years. How they might do it is they're going to age the person from 14 to, say, 25 or something. I'd age the person, make them look like they're getting older. And then next thing you know, when they're leaving to go out, they're going to go and make it look like they're going around the corner. But when they before they go around the corner, there'll be the one person here. And then when they go around the corner, it'll be the older version coming out. Wow, that's so now neat. another part I could tell you is when it starts off, as you see, and I got a ward here, right? This is from Forbes Award. I have this, yeah. this is when I was on the council, the Forbes Council. So they gave me this. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to receive that. We're all going to be wearing a nice suit and tie, right? So I'm going to be walking up there, calling my name. I'm going to be walking up the stage. So halfway at the stage, when I'm going like this, they're going to do it's going to be like a flashback, the whole movie's going to go through. And did a flashback, and then they're going to catch me again at the end, walking up the rest of the way to the stage. But I'm going to have my wife and children at the end of the stage. I'm just going to grab their hand, get up on stage, receive my award, and lots of clapping and laughter. Oh, I love it. I love so you're going to be in the you're going to be in the movie then. <laughs> well, no, I won't be in the movie. We're going to do like we're going to do uh, cameos at the end, and I think I'll probably be in the cameo at the end. Robert, we have your website pulled up here. So, the movie. Uh, yep, let's go over to movie. And that's the one there. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Powerful. Wow. It's amazing. Do you want us to go anywhere else while we're here on the website? If you want to see the people I've worked with, go to home. We're go to home. home. Yeah, scroll down. You'll see all the people I've worked closely with. Impressive list. Then you, you can go down more and there's other stuff down there. You know, th these are people that said nice things about me. Um, I never had to pay them to do it. <laughs> wow. You got Ben Gay III, he's uh, the top closer in the world. You got uh, Jack Canfield, uh, Satish Verma, very close friend of mine, the, the CEO of Thick and Grow Rich. Uh, you know, Les Brown's daughter, I've been coaching her for years, um, walking her through things. I published some of her books and her dad's books. You know, I've, I've done a lot with people. Then you got Jack Canfield, I've been on stage with him too. You know, just to be... It's, it's a weird thing how it all happened. You know, it, when you start off speaking, my very first event, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue. Honest to God, I had no clue what I was doing. And it was an awards event. And I killed it. I killed it. I had, I had 50 people show up with their partners. I said, bring your partner. You know, they bought the extra ticket and that. And I brought in people that were absolutely top of the hill. Right. These people were magnificent top. People came to see them. You know, like I remember more in top strategists in the world. 
I mean, he leaves a result out there. He's huge. He's a big name out there, you know. And then you got, you know, you got Les Brown. You got Les Brown's daughter, and all these people are coming to my stage, and they're like, "Well, you've done this a lot of times, man. I know it's my first, you know." <laughs> but I killed it. I killed it. It cost me a lot of money, do. It didn't cost me any money for the people. Just the only one I paid for was Les Brown's daughter because I felt that was that was a really big name to me. I ended up coaching her at the end. So, I mean, that was kind of, uh, wow, isn't this a trip? <laughs> That's amazing. So when you think about a key takeaway for our audience, you didn't gear yourself up and talk yourself into a state of panic. You just went there and just whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I went there and I said, look, you know what? We're going there for a good time. I, I'm the kind of guy I've been in contests before speaking contests and that I fail. If I, if I have to go there and I have to write something down and I have to try and remember it, Oh man, I, what was I thinking? What was I, what was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to say next? The hell would that speak from the heart? Like you guys talk about the head, to the heart. That's the 18 inch rule. The 18 inch rule is when you, when you, you got a thought here, put it to your heart, make it happen. That's what I did. Don't keep it up there and say, Oh, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Don't do that. You know, if you want something to happen, put it from your head to your heart, put that emotion behind it and drive it, drive in there. Who cares if people are criticizing you? Let them. That's how you encourage yourself to go further. I got people hating me. I got people copying me, mimicking me. I had one person, look, I've lost 40,000 followers on, on Facebook because I can't get my account. Someone broke in my account and took them away from me. That's okay. If they're true followers, they'll find you. Let them. That is, I have to yeah, applaud that. that. That is so <laughs> important because people become so obsessed with numbers. Yeah. I remember when I was in college, I went to Penn State. Your social security number was who you were. You were just a number, really, such a big school. And now we're in an era where everyone's about the numbers. How many people are following you? Who cares if one person like is following school. you? And, That's like yeah. school. They sit there and say, oh, what, what's your GPA? Well, you know what? Half the classes, I only got 52%. And I was okay with that. Because I understood what was meant to be, but I was I didn't understand the concept of doing the uh, I, I had a learning disability while growing up. A lot of people didn't know that. I was my percentile was a lot lower. So when I was in college, I was percentile of grade three or four, believe it or not. I had to learn how to get up there. So I had to train myself the fast speed, speed talking, speed walking, speed everything. You know, what I mean, I had to get there and I had to do it. And and uh, obviously I did it. So I can I in my master's program, I never opened up a textbook once, and I got all in the 90s. Not once. Because it's the exact same thing as the BA, just one chapter difference. That's all it is. Wow. Well, she went to the school of life, Robert. <laughs> yeah, I you got graduated I got yeah. from down. the school of life. I'll tell you, I got knocked down. When, that, when, that, yeah. when, when life hit me 100 miles an hour, I was not ready for it. But you know what? When I got back up after about 30 times, and I said, that'll be the end of this crap. Um, I I did it. I did it. I mean, I got, you know, I got some powerful things happening out there. <laughs> Robert, I'd love to know how everything that you've experienced, you now embrace as a father. How, how has that changed you as a father? Well, it's actually tough. I mean, I, I mean you become overprotective in a way, but you got to be careful because you want as a father, um, even a father in, in, in business, a father in all the different things I do, even the people I, I coach, sometimes I get protective and I say, no, no, don't do it that way. Cause you're going to lure her off or don't do this. It's like, you don't want them to fail. So you're trying to guide them a little too much. But the thing is you need them to experience that a little fail here, a little here and there. It's like going outside. If it's cold outside, you just look at it and say, well, what could you do differently? Well, maybe I could put a coat on. That's great. That's a good idea. I never thought of that. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to put a coat on beforehand, which doesn't work because you're too cool for that. It's too much of a fashion thing, right? You got to wear something else when your friends see you. But, I mean, simply put, if you want something to happen, you got to stand back and let the person fail, man. You got to hang on to them. Let them know guidance. Just give that little guidance to them. Say, listen. Now that you experience it that way, would you like to try it this way? Yeah, I appreciate I like that. that. Thank you. You know, some parents that they say um, they warn their children if they do it that way, this is what's going to happen to you. Well, my daughter, this is this is going to sound funny. My daughter says uh, maybe one day we can go out uh, do shooting practice because uh, I had a bunch of guns, right? 
And I said, no, I got rid of the guns. And, and, and she said, why would you get rid of the guns? I wanted to go out shooting one day just to relieve some stress. So I said, well, because you're 17 years old and you got a boyfriend coming around. I got rid of the guns. I got a past. And she goes, but I don't understand what that means. I said, let me say it again. You're 17 years old <laughs> and you'll have boyfriends coming around. <laughs> she did, she did I love that. <laughs> Well, it, it's also what I'm hearing is that it's not just about you and it's not just about your work. It's about doing what you think is best to set the foundation for your children. Well, here's the thing I, I do in everything I do, not just my my personal life, my business life, everything I do, everything. People see me, they know exactly who I am. I don't wear pajamas at Walmart. I mean, I, I dress the way I want to be seen on stage. Right now, I'm just doing plumbing. I apologize. I mean, I don't look too dirty, but I'm doing the plumbing and doing some yard work right now. I got to get it done because I'm taking my kid away for a good weekend for uh, Easter weekend. Happy Easter weekend, everybody out there, if, if this falls through on there. But if not, then wait for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, simply put, uh, when, you, when you look at a situation and you want to do better in a situation, stop being so bloody hard on yourself. Learn the lesson. Keep moving. Simple. There um, it is. There it is. And we beat ourselves up over. I know myself constantly. Blah, 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 blah. Like, shut up. Who's yeah. gonna critique you? The monkey Who's chatter gonna... is the monkey. Yeah. Who's going to critique you the most? You. Yeah. So true. And it, it's, you know, somebody said this to me on one of our shows. If you have a stone or a rock that's that's on the beach and the ocean is constantly hitting it and hitting it, eventually it just starts to disintegrate and become sand. And that's what we do to ourselves. And so I love what you shared here today, Robert slash RJ. And I'd love for you to, to tell our audience as we come to the end of the show, what is next for you? It seems like you've explored every possible opportunity. What else is there? Oh, yeah, there's a lot more. There's a lot more coming out. I to put it put it straight out. Um, I'm look like I sold the publishing company, so I'm retiring from that. I still do a few odd people to help about. I've had more trained in one person for a year on that company, so that's good. But I'm also doing masterminds now, so I'm coming out large score with some masterminds, and I'm keeping them really reasonable for people to, to work with me or work with the stuff behind the scenes. Um, but I'll, after the movie, once the movie comes out, here's what I'm going to do I'm actually going to start doing like TV shows once a week. All right. This time I'll be in those. I'll be in those ones and doing the TV shows and putting them out there on Roku and Apple and everywhere else. Um, the guy that actually owns the movie and I own the rights, um, he's actually has a TV station that goes all over the world, millions and millions. He's actually putting satellites out there. He's actually going to be beating uh, our main friend there, uh, you know, Elon Musk. He's actually going to beat him in the satellites. It's a multi-billion dollar contract that he's got. So he's putting out sad lights and he's going to do it that way. So it's going to be exploding a lot more than what people think. So we're just waiting for one more contract uh, to set the movie dates and everything else and move forward from that. And then, uh, I mean, I'm going to have a lot more of these little bad boys coming out too. <laughs> if you look, look at the back. Dr. Jacqueline, you should, do you wow, have one of those? Resilience. Resilience, the movie. Resilience. I oh, I noticed it there. I just want to we, say. And here's another thing. I, my wife's name is Faith, too, at the same time. Oh, uh, lovely. That, that's where I keep my like my Thanks. wedding oh. my wedding rings and that. Oh. My hands, and, yeah, I work a lot. I mean, my hands, I don't want them to get dirty. And I know I I'm married. She knows I'm married. <laughs> I just want to say, um, RJ, you're also in um, Dr. Jacqueline's book and a key feature yeah. there, your story. Yeah, I actually have it in, there. yeah, have you got it there, Dr. Jacqueline? There, yeah. adversity to awesome. So that's. And we do yeah. have a comment, by yeah. the way, from our friend Gaffa, who is in Ghana. Hello, watching live. Would love to connect with Robert. He has a motivating story. Well, you let's give your information. That's, yeah, that's simple. I had to get a hold of me. <laughs> What's the best way for people to get a hold of you? And who would you like to reach out? Right there. Um, I think I got to change that. Pub that's okay. Well, the publishing is fine. It'll transfer over to the other one. Um, but I am, I am going to knock that one down. Um, but you, you can go, you can go anywhere to Robert J. Moore or you do Mag Magnetic Entrepreneur. It goes, it, you'll find me. You can't miss me. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we wish you continued success and we're so glad that you came here to our platform and we look forward to having you back. 
Yeah, this you definitely could me, be a cocktail. You know me, I'll be back. You know me, I'll yeah. Be back. <laughs> Fantastic. And you know what? I got, I got to thank you, both of you, because uh, I, 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 you know me, I always watch behind the scenes and everything I do. You know, um, I like, I like where you started from and where you're coming, you're going to now. Aww. I mean, I've seen you grow and grow and grow, and, and Madeline, you, you, you don't give yourself enough bloody credit. You don't give yourself enough bloody credit. You, you, you tell people you're doing this and doing that, but you got to put more emotion in it because you're doing a lot better than what you think. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna help push this thing out there for you and get more people to uh, do music with. Um, there might be a few people that you, they're gonna be undercover. They're gonna be undercover who they really are. So it Ooh. really, for all you know, it could be Ringo Starr and you won't know. <laughs> wow, that's super <laughs> exciting. It's gonna Uh-oh. be a little test. I mean, it could be a little test. You know, well, and we would love anyone you want to send to our platform for interviews. Yeah. So we can support their I've work. Sent in a few. Way. I've sent a few. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I'll send a lot more. Excellent. Thank you. All Dr. Right, Chan, thanks. how do people get in touch with you and who would you like to contact um, you? Um, anyone that wants to um, find out what their mission is through their creative heart. At least, you know, you need to start that. You need to start to connect to your inner voice. And um, who wants a song? Who wants a song about anything they feel? As long as it's as long as it's constructive, I will not do destructive. I won't do that unless it's adversity to awesome, of course. But other than that, sorry, just yeah, you can you can find me on Madeline Carol Chan at gmail.com. Thank you very much. All right, we are <laughs> signing off for our next show, which is The Wise Ones with Mr. Red O'Laughlin, followed by Talking Heads. So wherever you are watching us, we invite you to stay there. If you'd like to be a guest, please go over to our website, which is usaglobaltv.com. Thank you so much to Robert J. Moore and to Dr. Madeline Chan. We appreciate you. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Bye for now. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.